All right, but so, some people believe that only a united opposition will be able to defeat um, you know, a party as strong as APC. So, but we defeated them. But what's your relationship with um, you know, the PDP governorship candidate? I, I have a relationship with the PDP. Mm. I came from the PDP, I was the PDP for six years. I was a central candidate for the PDP um, in 2019. I had the most votes in the party, right? So I know the leaders in the party. Now, what it is, is that we understand that at a practical level, we need to have as many people working together, especially because this election process is not free and fair. They promised us electronic transmission of votes. That did not happen. We saw all the intimidation and harassment. We saw all the manipulations at the World Coalition and the LG Coalition. So we need everybody to come together to save Lagos, to rescue Lagos. So we are in talks with several parties. Good parties have collapsed their structure for us. I expect that the PDP will do the same very soon, um, as well as other parties as well. Mm. All right, yeah. uh, you, you talked about the beavers now, uh, with the controversy surrounding the beavers and the presidential election. Do you still believe in the beaver system? The beaver system reduces the amount of impersonation. Because what people used to do before, they would steal so many voters' cards, then share it among their faithful to just go and vote, and that's how they win. But now the beavers create a situation where you must be a registered voter to vote. That's positive. Now, we have gotten an injunction and a court order that mandates for INEC to follow its rules that are set out. And if it does not do that, the ex entire election is null and void. Right? So, they must do electronic transmission of voting from the polling units. Right? Okay. So, that is on the one hand. On the other hand, we know that a lot of these people. They might be compromised. For the last election, it was very shameful, to say the least. So we are hoping for the best, yeah. but we are prepared for the worst. And we are moving into this election with the idea that what happened previously will repeat itself again. Yeah. So we are ready for any outcome. All right. How do you feel when people... You know, question your indigenship, seeing that, considering the fact that, you know, most of these the people who say this, they are not uh, from Lagos themselves. They are not from Lagos. It, it, that's why I say it's a very, it shows how low the position has sank to. I mean, it's an insult. It's a big insult. First of all, the governor is actually extremely disrespectful. He's extremely disrespectful to Lagosian because after they've given you position for four years, you owe it to them to come and account of your stewardship. It, be it a debate or whatever, you owe it to them. You cannot say you are not going to come because of some violence that happened somewhere. When you are the chief operators of violence in the state, you are the one that gave the order to join NSAS. You are the one that have looked at all these agros. I mean, look at how many, all the suffering that and intimidation and harassment that my party members have to go through. Black boys were nearly burnt alive at Oshu the Interchange. At Ojo Alaba, a young man that was just posting Peter B. posters was macheted on his forehead. Yeah. And we have a woman leader in Kodu that has been threatened and they almost set a fire ablaze. I did not say because of that I'm not going to come and debate, right? I'm selling myself to the people of Lagos because I believe they're important. I believe they will put me in position. Yeah. So clearly, him not coming is because he does not believe that the people of Lagos have any power. Yeah. He believes he will just walk into it, right? So it's extremely disrespectful. That's one. So now, to now add on to that is a man from Ijebu questioning a road survival. I mean, my great great grandfather was one was the first Nigerian Lagosian that was admitted into government in this country under Governor Bodilon's government. After which was Adema Lakija, and then you have now have Doherty coming. So even when you see me and Fusho Doherty, it's almost like history repeating itself. Mm. These are old Lagos families. So to bring this kind of disrespect because you are desperate and you don't do the job that you have seen, you, you are the owner of, you have the power. If you did the work well, you don't need to intimidate or suppress people's votes. You you probably come for your debate and talk to the people, tell them what you've done, right? But that's not the case. So it's extremely disrespectful. It's very unfortunate. We should consider the harmony that we've had in Lagos State. You see, indigenous of Lagos are welcoming people. They've always been, even before the Oba of Lagos sent the current ruling class, 
to Lagos. They are always are welcoming people. That is why a man from Iragiji can come to Lagos and become this man. Or a man from Oshun State, Aragashola, can come and become this person. Or Yayi, so Monolami Lagos from Ogun State, can come, represent Lagos West, use the resources to go and campaign in Ogun West, and now he's the center for Ogun West. Or Faleke from Kogi can come and be represented in Keja. Because of Lagos people are welcoming people. Yeah. But you cannot now come and make it seem as if Lagos is the commonwealth of Yoruba land. Yeah. When a Kadoso cannot go and become governor in Ogun State. And an Imashan cannot go and become a governor in Oyo State. No matter how long they live there. An Ogun Shaman is so difficult for an Ogun Shaman to become a governor in Ibadan. Talk less of a person from Lagos. So Lagos is not a no man's land. There are indigenous that have built this place out, invested in it, built it out, and created the culture and the foundation that then allowed for it to go. And that culture and foundation was welcoming. Mm. Everybody, regardless of the tongue that you have, the Tapa people. I mean, I was speaking to a lady from the Oshodi family here. You know their history. They are Tapa people. And they've been here for a very long time. They've contributed immensely to the development of Lagos State. And then you have... I mean, you have their worries, you have the egos in Badagri, and you also find, you see what's the most worst, the worst thing ever? Is that this people you remember that they are Yoruba when it's time for politics. Mm. When it is time to speak out against people coming and killing Yoruba people in Undo in Oyo, they are quiet. <laughs> when it's time to talk about indigenous rights, lands that have been taken without any form of compensation, the whole of Epe, Badagri, Ojo, that the government just seizes lands from indigenous of Lagos without giving them any compensation whatsoever, leaving them to be taking entire villages, sacred grounds, ancestral homes, ancestral groves, and just leaving these people marginalized now. Those were Yoruba. Those were indigenous of you. Those were indigenous of Lagos. When they were shooting at the Togi, they go and separate the Yoruba children from the Igbo children. So what are we talking about? What's this lip service? And that's why, no matter how they want to try and spread all these rumors, eventually, I know that this Lagos, this my Lagos, this our Lagos, sanity will prevail. Because it's the sanity that's allowed for the brotherhood that exists in Lagos. And I'm Zikwe's biggest um, partners were people like Adin Jadili, Herbert McCauley. You cannot question the pedigree of these two men I've mentioned. And that's what Lagos is about. All right, lastly, since our time is fast spent, your sister, Titi Lola, she coordinates the Lagos State the University. DVRT. Yes, and, um, you know, the state. But uh, does this not mean that, you know, this current government is inclusive enough since she's... No, Lagos... My sister has been working in Lagos State straight from NYC. She's only worked in Ministry of Justice. Mm. Yes, from Governor Fasha last time. And DVRT was a brainchild that she had because of all the suffering she saw in young people, young women and how men were just able to do and undo without any consequences. My family, we are raised to make impact. And this goes back even to people enlisting to join the army to go and fight during World War II. We are raised to make impact. And I'm so proud of my sister and what she has achieved in this time. Is, now, is she supporting you? Legal State Scripted is script for her to talk. <laughs> Well, we know ourselves. So, it's okay. All right. Uh, will you accept the outcome of the election idea? If it's a free and fair election, there's electronic transmission of votes, there's no harassment or intimidation, sure. I'm not a sports loser, but we are winning the election of the next government in Lagos. All right. Thank you very much for thank joining so much me for and good me. luck with thank the election. You so much. Yes. God bless you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is where we have to draw the curtain. Okay, My name is Damlola Ogunshaki. Do well to yeah, like and follow us on all our social media platforms showing on your screen on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Our WhatsApp number is also displayed on, displayed on your screen. And this Saturday is the upcoming uh, governorship election. So do well to go outside, bring out your PVC, dust it, and vote.